Giri Maring Wirelgal Bulan Nayan Baring. Ginigay Nijawan. I'm Auntie Lauren Jarrett, Master Weaver, um, very involved with the Microbat project at Morabai, working with community. Um, hello everyone, my name's Ruth. Um, I'm a project officer here at Morabai Language Centre. Uh, we were approached to partnership with Yarrawarra in doing this project about the microbats and um, how to use uh, indigenous knowledge and making roost to put back on country because in the recent fires in the mid north coast a lot of their habitat were destroyed. So we have about 25 people coming out here to Yarrawarra today to um, create some of these roosts. What we're creating is the yellow-throated scrub bird nests for the bats because the recent fires that we've had have destroyed a lot of the habitat. Um, so there's been a whole bunch of gullies and creeks that have just been swept through and after the end of today we'll have some complete nests that we can put out into the forest and start kind of filming and uh, recording, seeing what, what animals come to, see if we can get some bats in there. Ginigay, my name is Alison Williams. Uh, I am from this country. Um, the Northern Lowlands of Gumbanga Nation is uh, where my ancestors have resided for many, many generations. So I think there's a predisposition for uh, First Nations culture, not only with weaving techniques um, and fibre, knowledge, um, uh, but also environmentally the, the, a sense of connection and a, a sense of belonging and a sense of responsibility. I think we've always find with community that there is a longing for, to share knowledge, uh, a longing to learn and understand. And so whenever we have these sorts of programs, we tend to get a really positive response and lots of different people coming at different times to get involved, learn, share uh, knowledge. And um, I think the, it definitely is a cohesion builder. And it's a project where we are trying to use Indigenous First Nations science to help us in our science and how we understand how the golden tip bat lives and how we can help it recover post bushfires in the environment. This little bat will only weigh about five or six grams. Um, you can see it's not much bigger than my thumb, but it will eat maybe half of its body weight every night in insects. So it does us an immense service, our bat friends. Um, and it will happily move around the forest using probably four or five, maybe more different roosts and it will know where they all are and it will keep looking throughout where it lives in the forest to find more different roosts that are suitable for it. Okay, today we've been working in Newry State Forest. Uh, we've been hanging out the woven golden tip bat nests that um, our two groups have been weaving for the last 11 months. Uh, we've hang, hung those nests out and we put some cameras there um, to monitor what visits the nest. Um, and we'll be back in about a week to look at what, uh, what's been visiting the nests. Uh, we think maybe possums, but we're hoping that the golden tip bat um, we'll come and visit. Um, it was really good to have community working with us to save a threatened species. Uh, scientists can't do it on their own. We don't really know uh, how to recreate roosting habitat for the species, so we really need help from community. I think we'll get to a spot where we do have an artificial roost that we can deploy for the golden tip bat so that when the next mega fires, if they do come through or if a drought or something else happens, We'll know what to do instead of um, guessing like we were uh, this time around.
from there and it's been tremendous in the partnership with the relationship with the scientists because we've learnt a lot from the scientists and I hope they've learnt something from us. It is, you know, it is about creatures and nature. Um, it was a um, symbiotic process with us and the bat and the bird and plants as well. So we, we sort of understood the whole mm -hmm. process just doing it, eh? And, and I think it was a valuable exposure well. for the children because yeah. it's like going out what's on their, on, literally on their back door to go out to the forest to see the bats live. Mm. You wouldn't really get that opportunity any other time in your life, really.